Why are Norway and the US ahead on carbon capture and storage? And what is it exactly? Both countries benefit from the technical know-how of their oil and gas industries. While the tech is banned in Germany, the USA and Norway are investing heavily in it. The Norwegian government has supported our part of the project with 80% funding. The Norwegians are more technology optimistic than uh, Germans. On this edition of Transforming Business, we'll explore why. In Brevik, Norway, Heidelberg Materials began revamping a cement factory last year. They're installing a carbon capture plant without disrupting daily operations. The German company wants to launch the world's first net zero cement, produced using carbon capture and storage. Here's how it works. An industrial facility like this one in Brevik separates and captures the CO2 from its smokestack emissions. The CO2 is liquefied and shipped to a storage location. Then it's injected through a pipeline up to three kilometers under the seabed into deep sandstone formations. The CO2 can also be stored on land and transported by truck, rail or pipelines. The CO2 from Brevik will travel 300 nautical miles to Ai Garden. Then it will be injected into a pipeline and stored off the Norwegian coast. The storage facility is called Northern Lights. It belongs to Shell, Total Energies and Equinor. We'll return to the role of oil and gas companies later. So why is it so hard to produce cement without carbon emissions? Clinker is the main ingredient of, um, of, of cement. And um, in that kiln process, there's a lot of CO2 coming out of the limestone. This is Jan Toilin. He's a 30-year veteran of the cement industry. We try, of course, to, to reduce the amount of clinker in cement. That's a, a, a ever decreasing factor, but there is a limit um, because at a certain moment, your cement will not perform anymore. You will not have concrete with, uh, which has the, the performance that, that, that it needs. So th there are technical limits. CCS technology is intended for use in hard to abate sectors like steel, chemicals and the cement industry. Industries that can't completely eliminate carbon emissions. But why is Heidelberg Materials coming all the way to Norway for this? To find out more, we have to go to Germany. CCS technology is banned here. Economics Minister Robert Habeck wants to change that. He also paid a visit to Brevik. But 15 years ago, things looked a lot different. In German states like Schleswig-Holstein, people took to the streets against CCS, including Robert Habeck, Member of Parliament and later Environment Minister in that state. Ich kann mich gut daran erinnern, wie in meinem Bundesland in Schleswig-Holstein über CCS, also CO2-Abscheidung und Speicherung, diskutiert wurde, als in den Nullerjahren diese Technik in Deutschland genutzt werden sollte und zwar negativ diskutiert wurde. Seitdem ist viel passiert und zwar aus, aus meiner Sicht vor allem zweierlei. Erstens, die Technik ist an vielen Stellen weiterentwickelt worden und aus meiner Sicht ist sie reif und sicher. Norway introduced CCS as far back as 1996, in good part due to the country's massive oil and gas industry. The petroleum industry accounts for 36% of Norway's tax revenue. It's what helped make the country rich. But Norway was also a forerunner in implementing environmental protection standards. What happened that really incentivized or, or kickstarted uh, the history of, of CCS in Norway was um, a CO2 tax that was introduced by uh, the Labour government uh, that was in charge in 1992. This is political scientist Asta Dyrnes Nordo. She says some Norwegian politicians realized early on that climate protection was key. It incentivized uh, the oil uh, and gas industry to, to take measures. Uh, and I think also they quite early uh, saw the potential for CCS in their production to take emissions down, right? Because uh, they didn't want to have to pay this tax, at least not more than necessary. Norway is now investing some 1.5 billion euros to develop a complete CCS value chain, the Longship project. 
I think this really is um, a shift in the debate um, that they are interested in CO2 um, to make money of their storage capacity. This is Felix Scheunet. He studies European climate policy. So they are really um, asking for EU member states, do you want to export your CO2? We have the capacity here, we have the technology. Northern Lights is part of this project. The new CO2 storage facility belonging to Shell, Total Energies and Equinor, which we mentioned a moment ago, is due to go online in 2024. The companies have partnered with the Norwegian government. They'll receive subsidies in the development phase and the first 10 years of operation. The goal? Job creation as well as a lucrative business in CO2 transport and storage. Industrial partner Heidelberg Materials is also profiting from the new technology and the generous subsidies that will help revamp its facility. The Norwegian government has supported our part of the project with 80% funding. The whole investment is a few hundred million investment. But Brevik is just one of about 140 facilities operated by Heidelberg Materials, one of the world's largest concrete manufacturers. They're planning to invest some 1.5 billion euros by 2030, including in the US. That's also because President Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act offers financial incentives to companies that invest in carbon capture and storage. It's important to mention that they have um, a tax credit, um, which, which makes an or implements an incentive to, to deploy CCS. The Inflation Reduction Act um, strengthened these tax credits and extended them. So they really use it as one of the instruments to, to push for, for carbon management. In 2023, the largest number of CCS facilities were under construction in the US, followed by Canada, the UK, China and Norway. And this map depicts the commercial ventures that are already in operation. But why is the U.S. so advanced in this area? It is also important that they don't really have this discussion about how to abate emissions, at least not the way we have it in Germany. So in the U.S. you could also capture fossil CO2 um, and store it underground. To find out more, let's take a look at what's called enhanced oil recovery, a technology that's been employed mainly in North America for more than 50 years. High pressure CO2 is injected into an oil field, raising the pressure underground. The crude oil becomes more viscous and can be pumped to the surface more easily. So it's a way to pump up even more oil. Does it really make sense to collaborate with big oil when it comes to climate protection? So they know how these systems work. So they have the expertise and the technology. This is Klaus Wallmann. The geoscientist is a well-known expert on CCS technology. And therefore it makes sense that they are doing this kind of storage operation. But the Norwegians, I think, are currently the only ones that are really going for it on an industrial scale. A survey has shown that the Norwegian population supports CCS. As mentioned, they've been using the technology since 1996 and they have a carbon tax. 67% of Norwegians support CCS. They're topped by Denmark and the UK, and followed by the Netherlands and finally Germany. Norwegians are more technology optimistic than uh, Germans, and we also uh, think that that has something to do with the support for this specific technology. Asta Dürnes Nordo helped conduct the survey, which also came to a second conclusion. When you introduce these elements of cross-border uh, cooperation or trade, the support drops. We did a similar survey uh, five years ago. Then the drop was considerable in Norway. It moved from 80% support when you introduce them to a domestic situation where you store your own CO2 to 40% when you introduce them uh, to a project where you would import CO2 from other countries. And it's likely that's what Germany would have to do, export CO2 to Norway. Remember, CCS was previously taken off the table after protests, and demonstrators had one big objection. I think most of the criticisms some 10 years ago also in Germany 
came from the fact that CCS was originally planned for for the coal industry. So it was for coal power plants. And then the valid criticism was, okay, if we do CCS for coal power plants, we will never get the transition to renewable energies. Germany has now proposed legal changes that would permit CCS, but only in the North Sea, not on land. And subsidies will focus on sectors like steel and cement, where some 10% of emissions are classified as hard to abate. So here, CCS, so capturing and storing the emissions, is pretty much the only option that we have to avoid these emissions. This is Jessica Strefla. The physicist studies CCS and other carbon management strategies. The vast majority of scenarios that keep global mean temperature well below 2 degrees C need CCS. But what are the risks? Scientists say some 150 billion tonnes of CO2 could be stored under the North Sea, a region that includes a number of marine protection zones. By way of comparison, the mid-sized cement plant in Brevik plans to capture 400,000 tonnes of CO2 annually. But what if there's a leak? Leakage is possible. And the biggest problem are probably the old walls. So if we want to look at the North Sea as an example, we have there something like 17,000 wells that have been drilled in the past or the last decades mostly to look for oil and gas. And it's often unclear whether these old wells, these abandoned wells, uh, may be a, a pathway for CO2 linkage. That's something that needs to be considered. Let's recap. Countries like Norway have been on board with CCS for quite a while. They have a big technological edge and are subsidizing CCS on a grand scale. That's also true in the US under Biden. Norway and the US also benefit from the know-how of their oil and gas industry. Germany still has to legalize CCS and might export CO2 to Norway. One thing is for sure, the technology is expensive and it's not without risk. But at this point, do we really have a choice? What is important from my perspective is to acknowledge these risks and mitigate them as good as we can and then also compare those risks of using CCS to the risk of not using CCS, because also what we're not doing has impacts. In this case, if we don't use CCS, it means we accept more emissions, which leads to more climate change. So from my perspective, the risk of not using CCS exceeds the risks of using it. Do you think CCS technology is the wave of the future? Let us know in the comments.